Because the fact is that the programs that are labeled as being for the poor, for the needy, almost always have effects exactly the opposite of those which their well-intentioned sponsors intend them to have. As an example, what are you referring to? Let me give you a very simple example. Take the minimum wage law. It's well-meaning sponsors. There are always, in these cases, two groups of sponsors. There are the well-meaning sponsors, and there are the special interests who are using the well-meaning sponsors as front men. You almost always, when you have bad programs, have an unholy coalition of the do-gooders on the one hand and the special interests on the other. The minimum wage law is as clear a case as you could want. The special interests are, of course, the trade unions, the monopolistic craft trade unions in particular. The do-gooders believe that by passing a law saying that nobody shall get less than $2 an hour or two fifty an hour or whatever the minimum wage is, you are helping poor people who need the money. You are doing nothing of the kind. What you are doing is to assure that people whose skills are not sufficient to justify that kind of a wage will be unemployed. It is no accident that the teenage unemployment rate, the unemployment rate among teenagers in this country, is over twice as high as the overall unemployment rate. It's no accident that that was not always the case. Until the 1950s, when the minimum wage, law, uh, wage rate was raised very drastically, very quickly, teenage unemployment was higher than ordinary unemployment because, of course, the teenagers are the ones who are just coming into the labor market. They're searching and finding jobs, and it's understandable that on the average they would have a, uh, be unemployed more. But it was nothing like the extraordinary level it has now reached. It's close to 20 percent. Why? Because the minimum wage law is most properly described as a law saying employers must discriminate against people who have low skills. That's what the law says. The law says here's a man who would, has a skill which would justify a wage rate of a dollar and a half, two dollars an hour. You can't, you may not employ him. It's illegal because you have to, if you employ him, you have to pay him 250. Well, what's the result? To employ him two fi at 250 is to engage in charity. Now, there's nothing wrong with charity, but most employers are not in a position where they can engage in that kind of charity. Thus, the consequences of minimum wage rates have been almost wholly bad to increase unemployment and to increase poverty. Moreover, the effects have been concentrated on the groups that the do-gooders would most like to help. The people who have been hurt most by minimum wage laws are the blacks. I have often said that the most anti-Negro law on the books of this land is the minimum wage rate. Right? And so I think the real answer to your question is that you must not judge a bottle solely by its label. You have to look at what's inside and see what the law or the measure produces. If one looked at the label, though, and perhaps one of those government regulations that you would look askance at, askance at is that we look at labels. If one looked at the label and identified the objective of minimum wages, uh, are there no positive, legitimate object objectives achieved by minimum None wage? None whatsoever. In my opinion, there is absolutely no positive objective achieved by minimum wages. Its real purpose is to reduce competition for the trade unions and make it easier for them to maintain the wages of their privileged members higher than the others. 